All right, if you guys could please turn to 8.5, use properties of trapezoids and kites. Okay, a trapezoid. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So, this would be a trapezoid. The bases of a trapezoid, the parallel sides of a trapezoid, by the way, this, uh, this trap uh, abbreviation, that's my abbreviation for trapezoid. The parallel sides of a trapezoid are the bases. Okay, so for example, in this diagram, this side and this side are the bases. Now, the base angles. A trapezoid has two pairs of base angles. Each pair shares a base as a side. So, in this diagram, this would be a base angle pair, and this would be a base angle pair. They do not have to be congruent, okay? All right, the legs of a trapezoid, the non-parallel sides of a trapezoid are legs. So here, these two sides are the legs. Okay, an isosceles trapezoid. An isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid in which the legs are congruent, like this. So if these are the legs, if the legs yeah, are congruent, chance, right? the trapezoid is isosceles. Yeah, yeah, All right, the mid-segment. The mid-segment of a trapezoid is the segment that connects the midpoints of its legs. So if this is the midpoint of this leg and this is the midpoint of this leg, this is the mid-segment. All right? Now, a kite, a kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. Remember, consecutive means right next to each other. Okay, so these are congruent sides and these are congruent sides but opposite sides are not congruent so the sides across from each other cannot be congruent in order to make this a kite all right let's go on to page two show that cdef is a trapezoid okay so this is what we need to do we need to prove that one pair of opposite sides is parallel it looks like if we're going to have any chance of proving this this side would have to be parallel to this side so let's find the slope of DE, because remember, if the sides are parallel, they're going to have the same slope. The slope of DE, I'll write the equation over here, slope is rise over run, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You guys learned this in Algebra 1, and um, we also went over it in this class. Um, these, are, these are our two points, so I'm just going to plug them in. We've got 4 minus 3 over 4 minus 1, which gives us 1 third. Now let's use these two points. This is CF. 2 minus 0 over 6 minus 0. That gives us 2 over 6, which if you divide top and bottom by 2, you get 1 over 3. The slopes of DE and CF are the same. So DE is parallel to CF. Okay? Now, also, in order to prove that this is a trapezoid, these two sides cannot be parallel because there needs to be only one set of parallel sides. So we've shown that these two sides are parallel. Let's take a look at the slope of EF. EF. We've got 2 minus 4 over 6 minus 4. This will give us negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. DE. We've got 3 minus 0, I'm sorry, CD, not DE. CD, 3 minus 0 over 1 minus 0. This is 3 over 1, which is 3. The slopes of EF and CD are not the same, so EF is not parallel to CD. Because quadrilateral CDEF has exactly one pair of parallel sides, it is a trapezoid. All right, theorem 8.14. If a trapezoid is isosceles, then each pair of base angles is congruent. This is only with isosceles trapezoids. Regular trapezoids that are not isosceles, this is not going to be true, okay? So if the legs of a trapezoid are congruent, angle A is going to be congruent to angle B. Angle C, oh, scratch that, <laughs> angle A is congruent to angle D. There we go. And angle B is congruent to angle C. So these two angles and these two angles. All right. 
if a trapezoid has one pair, has a pair of congruent base angles, then it is an isosceles trapezoid. You don't have to show both pairs of base angles are congruent, only one is sufficient. So in this case, if angle D is congruent to angle A, or if angle B is congruent to angle C, then the trapezoid is isosceles. All right, also, a trapezoid is isosceles if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So trapezoid ABCD is isosceles if and only if AC is congruent to BD. All right, let's go on to page three. A shelf fitting into a cupboard in the corner of a kitchen is an isosceles trapezoid. And here is our shelf. Find angle N, or angle N, angle M, L, and angle M. All right, now, we can see that this is an isosceles trapezoid, okay? We know that if it's isosceles, the base angles are congruent. So if this is 50 degrees, this one also has to be 50 degrees. And we know in any trapezoid, the consecutive um, interior angles are going to be supplementary, okay? So this angle and this angle have to add up to 180. So this has to be 130. And since these two are base angles, this one also has to be 130. All right, let's write that out. Find the measure of angle N. Uh, KLMN is an isosceles trapezoid. So angle N and angle K are congruent base angles, and the measure of angle N equals the measure of angle K, which is 50 degrees. Find the measure of angle L. Because angle K and angle L are consecutive interior angles formed by uh, KL, the transversal, intersecting two parallel lines, they are supplementary. So the measure of angle L equals 180 degrees minus 50 degrees, which is 130. Measure of angle M, because angle M and angle L are a pair of base angles, they are congruent, and the measure of angle M equals the measure of angle L, which is, oops, wrong one, 130 degrees. So angle N is 50, angle L is 130, Angle M is also 130. All right, I'll let you guys do the checkpoint. Let's go on to page four. Okay, the mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to each base, and its length is one-half the sum of the lengths of the bases. Okay, so in any trapezoid, the mid-segment, that's the, the segment connecting the midpoints, is going to be parallel to both the other bases. So if MN is the mid-segment of trapezoid ABCD, then MN is parallel to AB, MN is parallel to CD, and MN is the average of the two bases. If you were to add this plus this and divide it by two, you would get the mid-segment. Let's do an example. In the diagram, MN is the mid-segment of trapezoid PQRS. Okay. So we know that this connects the midpoints. We're going to use this formula. Um, PQ, SR. PQ is 16. SR is 9. I just substituted 16 for PQ and 9 for SR. Um, 16 plus 9 is 25. 25 divided by 2 is 12.5. So the length of MN is 12.5 inches. All right, I'll let you guys do the checkpoint. Let's go on to the last page. Theorem 8.18. If a quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are perpendicular. So if this is a kite, then AC is perpendicular to BD. Also, if a quadrilateral is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. And you can kind of tell which one they are. Okay? So in this case, A, angle A is congruent to angle C, and angle B is not congruent to angle D. 
So if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, we don't have a kite. That, there can only be one pair. Okay, find the measure of angle T in the kite shown at the right. Okay, so by theorem 8.19, QRST has exactly one pair of congruent opposite angles. So this angle is congruent to this angle. Now hopefully you guys remember that the interior angles of a quadrilateral add up to 360. So if this was x, if the, and they're congruent, then this also has to be x x plus x plus 70 plus 88, all of this has to add up to 360. I'll combine like terms. I have 2x plus um, 158 equals 360. Subtract 158 from both sides. 2x equals 202. Divide by 2 x equals 101. So each of these angles are going to be 101 degrees. Okay? So I'm just going to write all this out, what we just uh, just discussed. Because angle Q does, is not congruent to angle S, angle R and angle T must be congruent, which is what I labeled here. So the measure of angle R equals the measure of angle T. Write and solve an equation to find the measure of angle T. Well, T plus R plus 70 plus 88. I used X over here, but you could use these if you want. Equals 360. They just made both of them angle T. So I have 2 times the measure of angle T plus 158 equals 360. Subtract from both sides, you get 101. There we go. Alright, I'll let you guys do this one, and that's all.